Now you worked with Hirsch a number of times. Mm -hmm. He, I would listen to him speak any time of the day or night, but uh, I had nothing, nothing, I could not, as a director, I, I, I had nothing with him, but he was a brilliant man who loved theater. Mm -hmm. What did you make of him? Well, um, John Hirsch was the first He wasn't the first director I ever worked with, but he was the first genius I ever worked with. And I worked with Hirsch more than any other director um, until Robin Phillips. But I adored him. I just adored him. And I think he knew that. And I think, I suspect that that, well certainly from my point of view when I direct, that's very useful for a director. It makes a director feel much more secure and, and comfortable. And I certainly didn't do it for that reason. I didn't know that at the time. I thought directors were, were all, um, all powerful and that there was nothing you could do to shake a director's confidence because the director always knew everything and you knew nothing. The director had all the power and you had none. And I accepted that. I, I thought that was the way um, it went. That was the way things were. That was the way things should be. Uh, so I never questioned that. And, and so the directors I always worked best with were the directors that I had complete faith and trust in. And Hirsch's, and Hirsch's strengths for you are, because he is genius, he has got this vision that even mm -hmm. I could see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are his strengths, as it were, for you? Well, uh, for me, they were his confidence and the fact that in all the the plays I worked on with him, he always knew more than I did. Um, I did uh, Mother Courage with him, for instance, and Zoe Caldwell played Mother Courage, and he talked with us for uh, what seemed like days, I'm sure it was only 20 or 30 minutes, about his escape from Hungary and uh, his life when he was a, a boy trying to survive, trying to eat, trying to live. Um, some of those stories may have been apocryphal, but he didn't present them as that. He presented them as his own experience. Mm. And we were, we sat there enraptured. And of course, then that went into the play, into the production. And I, I found that Robin Phillips does that as well. He will, he will talk at great length about um, something that has happened or a, a story of something in his life or, or something else that he has observed. And then he leaves it. And he leaves it for you to then take that information and put it into the, into the play. And I, I, used to found, I used to find that that's what Hirsch did. Now, when Hirsch didn't like what I was doing, and goodness knows that happened, then he would be quite stroppy with me. He took me once when we were working in New York on a walk through Central Park because I was playing Antigone and he wanted me to play Antigone as a sex object and I didn't understand, I did, A, I didn't understand Antigone as a sex object and B, I didn't believe in myself as a sex object. That was the real crux of the matter. Um, and I realized years later that if I had had the courage and the gumption to do what John wanted, it would have been a much more successful show. But I fought. And I fought because I had this fixated idea about Antigone in my mind that she was earnest and, and uh, committed and driven and impassioned. And that, to me, at least at that time in my life, went along with braids and no makeup. And Hirsch wanted me to wear, he, he'd gotten this wig, red wig, and he got the wig department to put it on me upside down. Not so that it covered my face, but so that instead of it being put on like a normal wig and lying flat, it was put on me the other way around so that the back was at the front and the hair then fell that way, but it didn't fall flat. It fell sticking up because it was knotted, of course, to go the other way. So he wanted it like that so that I would have, this was long before Farrah Fawcett, 
so that I would have Farrah Fawcett hair. And it went like this. And I was just appalled at this. I was shocked and appalled. I looked at myself in the mirror and I, I blushed red. I was so embarrassed and so embarrassed for me. And, and I thought at the time so embarrassed for him. But later on I thought, no, I was really only embarrassed for me. It would have been a much more interesting Antigone than my limited vision. Again, because I couldn't incorporate what he wanted, I didn't have the, the guts and the wherewithal to say, let's try it. Let me see what I can do. I couldn't go there. Now, he must have thought at least that he could see that I could go there because he never asked anything of anyone that he didn't think was possible. But I couldn't see it.